you? And how did you get here? Hello and welcome, my dimensional variant leaves. Okay, last time we had some story progression for each of the main characters, which is good. But today, something special is coming. Pack your dimensional traveling kit and let's go to Sinnoh. Twice. Episode 89, Dialga and Palkia, the space-time cataclysm. Dawn's Piplup was pokenapped by no one else but Dawn herself. Wait, how does that even work? Well, who am I kidding here? It's just some otherworldly shenanigans. What else could it be in a show like this? The otherworldly Team Rocket is actually quite competent. They managed to get Intellion and Lucario. And I do like their gadgety outfits a lot. Also, Go and Dawn follow behind them into another dimension to get those Pokemon back. Okay, seemingly there are no Pokemon in this world. Well, we did see Meowth and Wobbuffet before with Team Rocket, so at least at one point there had to be some. Maybe Team Rocket actually got them all already? Well, Dawn just got Spider-Man memed. But that other Dawn had a Piplup once Two. What might have happened here? Also, what a missed opportunity. They could have just made the shiny versions of each Pokemon normal in this other world. And well, our normal versions would be the shiny ones then. That would be way more interesting. So her Piplup de-evolved into an egg. Which happened to a lot of other Pokemon as well. This smells a lot like Dialga's power here. Probably going on a rampage somehow. But hey, doesn't that mean we could probably see our protagonist's Pokemon de-evolve too? Maybe Pikachu into Pichu? Maybe Ash has to hatch an egg for his Pikachu to come back. It would be kind of interesting to have Pichu a couple of episodes until it evolves into Pikachu again. Well, she knew that her Piplup turned into an egg and was at this Pokemon Center they are at now. So why did she take the other Dawn's Piplup then? I mean, obviously it wasn't her own one, so she just kidnapped it and was being mean. That's not nice. Okay, Pikachu cannot use Thunderbolt anymore, probably because of those particles Team Rocket is dispersing everywhere. That is kind of bad, and it seems that they have control over Dialga's power, as the Pokemon also forget their moves before de-evolving. And then, Ash and Chloe go through that portal as well. And here, Ash meets himself. But in shiny. Quick, catch him, before he runs away. A good start to this two-parter, even though nothing much happened, but it set it up nicely. So, let's go into part two! Episode 90, Dialga and Palkia, the Great Space-Time Clash. Okay, so Shiny Ash's Pikachu turned back into an egg as well, no surprise here. But will Normal Ash's Pikachu also become an egg? We have to see if it is even affected at all. Wait, 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 wait. Team Rocket with actual good disguises? This is another world! And there it goes, turning into a Pichu. Wait, this would raise Ash's caught Pokemon counter, wouldn't it? Also, Ash wanted Pikachu to use Iron Tail, which it learned way after Thunderbolt, so... It obviously would have forgotten that as well, right? So putting the Pokemon into Pokeballs will increase the time it, they need to de-evolve. Which is obviously a good thing, but Pikachu still doesn't want to go in. We really need the backstory for why. We still don't know that. Why is Pikachu so afraid of Pokeballs? Uh, sorry, Pichu in this case, I guess. 
And here we have Shiny Go and Shiny Chloe, both of which are pretty cool. I do like their normal versions, don't get me wrong, but these two with their techy knowledge are kind of awesome. They recreated Team Rocket's technology even, so that their time won't be rebound. Yeah, it obviously were Dialga and Palkia, I mean, come on. But that red chain makes it so that Arceus cannot see their battle to interfere. Actually a pretty good plan. Pichu tries cutting the chain with a headbutt. Well... Pichu tries cutting the chain with a headbutt. Find the arrow. And now everyone was turned back into a child. I like that they did that. It's cool to see everyone like that. And especially since the clothes remain normal and are way too big for them now. But shouldn't the clothes also rewind back in time and become like plants or wool? Well, I guess you cannot show naked children, which is a bit illogical, but for the better here. And every Pokemon returned to being an egg as well. So nothing can fight anymore. How will they solve this though? Well, everyone sends their feelings towards Dialga, Palkia and Arceus and yeah, it's one of those endings. I don't mind it all that much, but I'm not really into it. I would have rather seen a good Pokemon battle here, but so oh well, it's still a nice scene. And then Dialga and Palkia just suck back everything they have done turning everything normal again. So we won't see Ash with Pichu for a while, it's Pikachu again, and oh well, it would have been interesting, but I don't mind it. Well, these two episodes were pretty great, and I really liked seeing all the Pokémon in pre-evolutions, especially those we haven't seen as of now. That was quite interesting. I hope we get more like this in the future, but we have still two more episodes to go. Episode 91. The ghost train will now depart. Well, they saw a certain boy losing his ticket and they followed after him into a train to give it back. And then we get this. Grookey, again, misbehaving and well, this image shows minutes before something bad happens. And now, as he touches the odd keystone, something goes into Ash. This is good, right? Right? All is normal. Nothing strange to see here. Ash wants to murder Go, basically, by having him hold some Drifloon. I kinda like mean Ash, but this is going a bit too far. Well... He, or not really he, but whatever possesses him, does know that Drifloon can't actually take children into the afterlife because children are too strong for them. Yeah, that's what the Pokedex says. Strange, but I mean, they could explode on their faces if they want to. But oh well. Go just gets the best catches in this series. He just caught a Shedinja by having an Enkeda evolve near him. So its shed shell got into one of his Pokeballs, giving him the Shedinja. He didn't even notice he caught something. I like that. Do more funny stuff with that. I, I really love that. So a Spiritomb is at fault for what's happening here. Is it possessing or rather controlling Ash? Alistair, which they have found by now, explains that it is one of the 108 spirits that reside inside a spiritum that possesses Ash. And it is an ill-natured one. So, how to get it out again? Uh, well, Pikachu, one question. Is this to help him, or just because you want to have fun? Okay, Alistair's plan is to have a Sinistee enter Ash's body and get the spirit out. Just look at this image and tell me this isn't something we needed. 
and Ganga puts the spirit back in, everything is soft now. That was kinda easy, all in all. I really enjoyed this episode, and well, I kinda like the concept of ghost trains as well, so yeah, this was kinda for me. But it is a two-parter as well, in a sense. So the ghost train might be finished here, but we're not done with Alistair, so get your ticket and let's go. Episode 92, Ganga goes all in. The road to Gigantamax. Okay, so Ash wants Ganga to Gigantamax. Nice. That would give him both the ability for Gigantamaxing and Mega Evolution. As well, technically, Z moves. But, well, the Z crystals only work in Alola and the tournament is in Gala and... If we were in Alola, he couldn't use Gigantamax, because that's only in Gala. You cannot have everything, I guess. But the tournament will still be interesting with two of those combined. Well, you're trying your best, but this ain't it, Chief. Seems like we need some max mushrooms for a certain super. The first mushroom is in a graveyard full of Corsola, which you should not touch or they will curse you. And it goes well until Ash loses his cap, which falls right onto a Corsola, which will then start to curse him. However, Go throws the Pokeball at it to catch it and solves it by that. Yeah, like I said, gets the best catches. The second one is watched over by a Trevenant, who just hates humans, so it starts chasing them. Yeah, and in that one episode back in the day, they told us that there are no evil Pokemon, right? Sure. The third one... Oh, isn't that cute? The drag cloak is sleeping on it. But how will they get it now? And now the little one, after falling off, crawls into Ash's head. Which is even cuter. And since drag cloak is missing his little one, it just takes Grookey. Who hammers onto its head so that it gets annoyed and a battle breaks out. Yeah, that's grooky for you, I guess. And since it wants to apologize and it is a nice mon, it will give them the mushroom it was sleeping on. But not before saying goodbye to it in a very, very, very cute way. It's just a wholesome scene. But now we can make the Gigantamax soup. And thus... It finally can Gigantamax. Can't wait to see it in actual battle. This episode was very enjoyable. I really liked it. And we are setting up more and more for the tournament, so really you get to see that. And as of this episode, Go now has 104 Pokemon. More than one per episode. I hope you are enjoyed these episodes and if so or if not tell me in the comments below and if you liked my video why not use the gmax terror on the like button and thunderbolt on subscribe and the little bell also check out the links in my description also down there that lead to my twitter instagram and twitch where i will stream every friday sunday and saturday at 6 p.m. European time. Until next time, bye-bye.